Hi guys, welcome back to Watch With Us. My name's John Keel. And I'm Anthony Kozlowski. And we are back for another uh, day at the table chatting about yeah. watches together. We, we've got a good topic that Anthony thought of. It's a, it's a newer watch, it just came out, and uh, I feel like there's been a couple different uh, blogs about it, but I haven't been able to watch any videos on it, and we actually hooked up with a, a retailer and we got some cool videos and photos of it. Yeah, some live shots, right? So yeah, so uh, we're gonna talk about it. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about the Tudor Black Bay Chrono Dark. Dark, edition. That's quite the name. Yeah, <laughs> limited edition. So the Tudor Black Bay Chrono Dark, LE for the All Blacks. For the All Blacks. Which is, uh, I'm just learning, the All Blacks are New Zealand national rugby team. So Who are the um, champions. The champions and they'll be defending their title uh, this year. Way to go All Blacks. Yeah, yeah big so. fan here. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to get into it really, really heavy now. Uh, so before we do that, uh, what are you rocking? What are you wearing? Oh uh, yeah, so I'm um, wearing my Rolex Submariner from 87, uh, transitional model. And uh, the more the more I wear it, the more I realize why it's it's such an iconic uh, seller for Rolex. Right. It just it goes with everything. Super comfortable. I love it. Yeah, it's a it's a staple. It's an icon. It is. And uh, let's face it, you can't get a new one, so why not go vintage? <laughs> you can. <laughs> you just have to pay a lot for it. Yeah, so, probably too much. But, right. Uh, what do, what do you got today? I'm actually wearing a prototype. Um, I have a good friend of mine, uh, Chris Locke, who is, he happens to be a touring Nashville artist. He's a guitarist oh, cool. for uh, Chase Rice. She's in Chase Rice's band. And we've been buddies uh, for about a year now through watches. And he just got in his first prototypes of his brand that he designed. And it's called Vice Watch Company. It's a cool watch. And so he got in, I think, maybe four or six prototypes. Um, I like it. It comes on a bracelet. It's it's to me it's reminiscent of let's say a uh, a fifty fathoms a little bit. It's got the yeah, yeah, it's got I a think thinner so. bezel, uh, a, a very unique look or a very unique uh, twist on maybe what a fifty fathoms would be. And I just got the prototype in. They're not in production yet. However, um, and I didn't plan this, but however, you guys can show him some love. I'll put put a link in below to cool. his his Instagram. And uh, I know he's working on getting some funding, and hopefully within, I don't know, a half a year or so, these will be hitting the market. So cool. it's a cool gonna, piece. You're gonna have him at Watch Gauge. I'm sure I, I, I hope to. I'm, I'm okay. sure I might. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm fully supportive. He's a great dude um, and great design. So it's yeah. a nice looking watch. So cool. Yeah. It's, it, I dig it. I dig it. I really, it's a nice look, and I'm happy with it. So Chris, uh, good luck, and and you, everybody here. Jump over and follow him on at least Instagram at this point, and he'll keep you up to date with what's going on. So, let's talk about this. I've got my yeah. I've got my MacBook here <laughs> down below. It's out of the screen here, but let's talk about the Tudor Black Bay Chrono Dark, Dark limited, limited Edition <laughs> of one thousand one hundred eighty one pieces. Right. And what we learned is for every time they right, so it's one thousand one hundred eighty one pieces because in the team's history, in the All Blacks history, there have been including the current players, 1,181 people to ever play for the team. Seems like a lot of players, to be honest with you. Well, you don't know. They could be 100 years old. That's right? true. Or, That's and true. How many people are on the rugby team? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> no so, idea. They, they, I mean, they <laughs> might be a big team. Right, But right. the point being is, so the reason they picked 1181 is because 1181 players in history have been mm -hmm. on this team, have played for this team. Well, they also, Tudor also does sponsor the team. Correct. So this, there, there's that story behind it, and I believe most of the players are wearing the Black Bay the, Dark, the the non chrono watch, version, the non chrono Correct. version. Correct. Yeah. So that's what we found out is that the, you know, through all the campaigns and everything we're seeing, all the team is sponsored or the team itself is sponsored, and they're they're all rocking their regular Tudor Black Bay mm -hmm. Dark. Uh, the chrono is kind of a celebratory thing because they won the world championships, right? And they for the 2019 year, uh, going into 2020. They're going to be defending that championship right. title, so hence the limited edition, hence the all black, hence the the model itself. What I find hysterical, what doesn't make a lot of sense to me, is that um, they're going to add another piece <laughs> right. for every player that signs right. with the team. So if there's 1181 now and you sign with the team tomorrow, they're going to make one more limited edition piece and then who, to what, the market. What retailer gets that watch? <laughs> Do they give it to the player? I mean, it's, are we led to believe that they actually will only make one? Right. Or are right. they not making an extra? I don't know, eighty, um, you know, another forty or fifty pieces, right. And putting them into a vault. Sure. <laughs> right. Sure. So, but that's 
odd, you know, so they're gonna add one piece for every player. And uh, I, I mean, I it's kind of it's kind of unique. I don't think I uh, any company has done something quite like that. But I don't know. Hey, look, it's a it's it's maybe it's a gimmicky thing. Who maybe, maybe it'll work? Right. But maybe we kind of we we broke this down. Basically, the good and the bad. We'll start with the good. And these, of uh, course, are all our opinions. Right. If you disagree or agree, please comment below. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Um, but opinions are good, so yeah, you know, we welcome it. We but, welcome uh, them. I think first off, I mean, it's it's a nice looking watch. I, I've been a fan of the steel version, um, and I think the the black the PVD is a it's a nice looking watch. I agree. I think, especially when we saw the photos from mm -hmm. our retailer friend who who sent us live photos, who happened to put on a NATO strap. And those of you who know me, and I'm not I don't love bracelets, so that that watch on a live photo on the NATO strap was actually at least twice as good looking as I thought the original image Hands down. Were. So, I mean, we'll put up photos of it on the bracelet versus what he sent to us on the NATO, and right. I think most of you will agree, or maybe you won't, but John and I agree on the NATO. It's I think a good looking it watch. looks really nice. It's a really good looking watch. So that's a that's one of the good points. Another good point is the price. The price. So obviously price is all relative, but based on what else is on the market right now, you're getting a limited edition. You're getting a, a black steel watch with an in-house movement. Now, this movement, for those of you that don't know, is actually modified off of the Breitling Zero One movement. Right. That is a fantastic movement, and you can read up many articles. It is one of the best chronograph movements on the market, and this watch is under $6,000. If you compare a non-limited edition Breitling watch with a Zero One movement on a leather strap, you're minimal paying $8,000. This has a, a vertical clutch, so what that does is the chronograph hand will never jump uh, forwards or backwards when you start it. It has an automatic date change, so you never have to worry about what time you're power setting it. Power reserve is heavy on that one? 70 hours, right. three hour, uh, three day power reserve rather. Uh, and it's, so it, when you factor all those in, and it's a limited edition, so you would assume a low production limited edition like this it might retain its value a bit better. I think one of the best parts about this watch has to be the price point. So right, so the price point, you know, what I get out of the whole thing is that based on what it's priced at, if you want anything that's comparable with a, the same or similar type movement in it, you're looking at another 50% more than this one's going for. Easily. So the price point's fantastic for what it is. And, uh, you know, like we said, good looking, great price point. The limited edition number is pretty interesting, right? Like uh, we, we already spoke about the number itself, but Tudor makes a lot of watches. A lot. Right, to do an 1100 or 1200 or 1300 limited edition piece. Right, worldwide, and then you got to think out of those, we'll just say 1200 pieces, how many are coming into each country? Right. And then in the US alone for every state, most retailers I would say would be lucky if they received two. So I mean, it's right. very low well, production. Then that, that kind of comes into question too. Do you think that, do you think that the majority of these are going to be shipped to New Zealand? I would hope so. I mean, it's, right. it's based on a, a New Zealand team. You would you would think that, but I mean, it, majority I would assume are going to go where they're really trying to, you know, build the market, push, build the market, sell the brand, and where they where they sell well. So uh, it's it, it, you'll it's going to be impossible. I feel like to find the breakdown of where exactly they're going. But regardless, even if they go majority of uh, let's just say majority went to the U.S there's still not enough to really go around to meet the demand for this watch. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And then then I kind of thought of something too while we were like putting together the, the list here. If all 1181 of these guys who played for this team in the past are still alive, I don't know how old this team is. Right. I mean, they would probably want one for, one for themselves. Exactly. So you gotta figure they go through it quickly. Who knows? It's, right. it's just for the fact that a company, how many, how many, do we know how many watches Tudor makes in a year? I mean, I'm sure they're owned by Rolex, so I, I'm sure you're not going to know. I haven't heard any numbers around, and being, you know, obviously we're both in the industry. Anytime right. I've attended a training with different brands, they're very hesitant on giving you an actual number. So right. it, it, it's really hard to but say. But it's a high volume. It's not, it's not it's a brand high. that's making 20 or 30 or 40,000 right. watches. It's making a lot more than that. At least I would, I would believe so. So the fact that they're making such a low limit edition, I think, is a very good point for this, uh, for this particular piece. I didn't have many other good points after that. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> and it's not bashing the watch; those are good points. Right. I think I think it's a nice watch. 
Uh, but those would be the good points. We'll go into some of the things that we don't think aren't as good or bad rather, and there's probably twice the amount and, and you'll hear why. Yeah, so I mean, the first thing that came to my mind when, you know, Anthony, Anthony showed up in my office earlier today and we were discussing the topics we're gonna talk about and the Black Bay was one. You said, well, the, you know, we have the new, the new Black Bay, limited edition dark chrono mm -hmm. is uh is out and I, I was like dark i'm like you know they did a they did an all black watch mm -hmm. my feeling was or is is that the all black watch thing is kind of over it's dying out i think uh you know seven eight years ago when it was new and exciting and brands were just starting to experiment with it it was it was kind of fun it's kind of overkill i think i think it's it's, I think similar. it's Ryan's course yeah and i think you know, it's people always say when when Rolex or or Tudor decides to do something, it's probably on its way out because they're the, <laughs> they're the last to do everything. Yeah. But um, me personally, I, I'm getting a, a bit tired of seeing a standard production piece and just kind of making it black steel. I mean, well, so that's kind of brings up another point. This is kind of a repurposed watch. Right. Right. It's um, you know, with all due respect. I loved when when Tudor came out with the Black Bay Chrono in Basel. I believe it was a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. It was one of my favorite watches of the Basel show. Yeah, um, aesthetically looking, and I was I was watching from afar. I didn't go to Basel that year, but aesthetically, uh, it was one of my favorite watches of the show. But that being said, I do hear it's not the hottest seller. It doesn't sell well. I'm really not sure why because just like the good points about this particular piece, goes to the same with, with the Chrono, the, the steel except version. For it's in steel. I mean, it's a great price point, in-house movement developed by Breitling. So, I mean, it's a fantastic design. It's 41 millimeters. It is slightly thick, but obviously with the Chrono, that's an automatic piece. It's gonna be slightly thicker, yeah, but- this one's, this one's, I, I read 14.9 uh, millimeters. Okay, so, I mean, not enormous, but pretty thick. It's for, thick, it's, it's tall. It does, especially you'll see in the photos on the NATO, it really exposes the thickness of the case. Yeah. But, um, you know, I know that, you know, from being in the industry, the Black Bay Chrono and the Black Bay Dark, the standard three hand, both those watches don't sell well. Now what you have here is a sponsorship of this rugby team where most of the players are wearing the Black Bay uh, Dark, yeah. the standard three hand and they come out with this limited edition and you go to the website and you see most advertising for the standard chrono and the Black Bay dive watch in dark. Right. To me, it seems like a bit of a advertising ploy, you know, sparked by a limited edition. Right, so we went, I, I mean, we opened it up, I went to look at the website to look specifically at the chrono dark mm -hmm. and that whole page was basically, seemed like it was plugging, the steel chrono and the three-handed dark. <laughs> For sure. So I think you brought up a really good point earlier that didn't even cross my mind, is that they come out with this limited edition in black for models, you know, based on models that aren't selling all that well. Then once they sell that limited out, they're hoping that the momentum would continue along right. with the non-limited pieces. A limited edition is gonna get a lot of spotlight. People are gonna talk about it, do uh, articles on it, videos on it. So for the average person that is not gonna be quick on the draw and be able to get one of these watches but starts to fall in love with it, what are you gonna do? You're gonna go to the next best thing. For the production what, model. Right, do you want the exact watch in stainless steel? Or do you like the black look and you're gonna go with the non-chronograph version? So I think it's, it's very smart by Tudor, but because I kind of know their thinking behind it, it's going on the bad list. Because we know we know that other brands have done this, Breitling being one of them. I worked for Breitling for many years and I've seen it many times that they take a, a watch that doesn't sell well, they throw a, a certain production number on the back, whether it be a hundred or a thousand, and they just- Maybe change the dial up right. or whatever. They uh, make it you know, a black steel, whether it's PVD or DLC, and just try and sell it because let's face it, they have an excess of cases in the right. factory and they need to get rid of them. And again, they hope that momentum carries on to the production model. Right, exactly. It, look, it's a brilliant thing to do. Right, it's business. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, one of the things we discussed, and this kind of ties into that a little bit, is is the All Blacks, the team, mm -hmm. you know, New Zealand rugby national team. Is that a huge overall appeal or draw for an advertising campaign or something <clears throat> like that? 
this isn't necessarily a bad of the watch. It's no. a question because the truth of the matter is I've never seen a rugby game. Right. And doesn't mean anything that I haven't seen. It's not like, I'm not saying if I haven't seen it, it doesn't mean anything. I'm just curious as to the overall appeal. Right, I think given the state of the watch market right now, it will work because people are buying based on, you know, what's gonna hold its value, what can potentially go up in value and having a low production limited edition will do just that most of the time, especially from a strong brand like Tudor. Right. But if it wasn't as strong as a market as it is right now, would you really want to be wearing a watch associated to a rugby team if you're not a fan? So that well, that's the thing. So if you're not a fan, that is the big the big point. Mm -hmm. What's really funny, and I'm I'm just saying because I'm I'm a big fan of other things, mm -hmm. right? Like I remember a couple of years ago, Tag Heuer came out and sponsored the World Surf League. Okay. And I, I mean, I was like, wow, finally, somebody's sponsoring yeah. the, surf, the surf world. Right. And I had friends of mine going, who's going to give a shit about that? Right, right, right. Right? Like, I get that. You know, so where I don't follow rugby, I'm sure there's rugby fans who are stoked. Right. You know, and when you, we both know, you and I are huge hockey fans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, Tiso is the only brand I've ever seen sponsor anything hockey related. If this exact watch came out for like the LA Kings that wear all dark jerseys, I'd, I'd, I'd be buying it. I'd be, but... yeah, I'd be <laughs> stoked about that. Right, right, right. Right, like so, so the overall appeal of the rugby thing where we might not be personally be excited, mm -hmm. I'm sure there are tons of people out there who are. For sure, you know? at least 1,181 of them. <laughs> at least, if not more. And, and you know, once they start adding one watch, Per signed right, person. right, right, right. Uh, that's pretty. That's pretty comical. But uh, another point would be, you know, the fact that uh, we didn't touch on it yet. But no. this watch is actually PVD, it's so it's not, not DLC. DLC. And uh, from what I read online, um, no one really touches why, but they they say that going DLC would really up the the value of the watch in terms Price of its retail value. Yeah. So, but. I mean, being in the industry, we both know that's... I'm calling that's, bullshit on that one. That's, that's BS. It's, yeah. There's really not the case. I mean, if most of us knew actually how much it costs to manufacture a watch for its materials, it, that doesn't necessarily have to do with the price of the watch. You're paying for advertising, try. you know, developing the technology, things like that. So I think they so, probably could have went DLC on it. And it probably wouldn't have added maybe $60 to the price of right, the watch. Right. Or the cost of the watch being made. The perfect analogy for me, and I wouldn't have known this had I not stepped into the micro brand world with Watch Gauge, but I see companies, micro brands come out, and they come out with a great diver, mm -hmm. right? And they'll have a ceramic bezel in there, and this has got, they'll, it'll be automatic sapphire crystal, right, right. 316 all stainless steel with a uh, ceramic bezel insert, mm -hmm. and the watch, the entire thing retails at $600 right, right, or $700. Right. So when a brand, and I'm not calling uh, Tudor out on this or Breitling or anybody else, but when any brand comes out with a particular watch, and then all of a sudden comes out with another version with a ceramic insert, but the watch is eight hundred dollars more. Right. How do micro brands do it for exactly the entire watch for eight hundred? Exactly. So, you know, the the cost cutting factor for calling it PV, you know, for making it PVD versus DLC to me is that that's garbage. The other side of the coin is that. DLC is just much, much more resistant to scratches, to wear, to rubbing off. It's a, it's a stronger process, and DLC can still scratch. And if it's a stronger process and it can still scratch, you kind of have to worry about PVD. Not to mention, I would. this watch comes on a bracelet. When I worked for Breitling and I visited Switzerland and went to the manufacturers, I asked for some of the black steel watches, why wasn't Breitling making black steel bracelets? And they're, they're traditional bracelets. Right, like a, uh, uh, the, the pilot bracelets the and avatar bracelets. Five links to three links. Right, and their answer was, if the two links are rubbing together long enough, it will scratch and and fade away the the coating. The black will get will will fade away, no matter whether mm -hmm. it's DLC or PVD. Right, it will it will come off eventually. Right, and that's why they've never done that bracelet. Uh, they, in the past, they did the mesh bracelet, but that's because the links are kind of connected. And, and metal's the not rubbing on metal. Right. So I have to wonder in five years, ten years, whatever amount of time in the future, what's going to happen when this watch starts to not only scratch, because the scratching is up to the consumer. It's not based on yeah, the, the brand, but what it. happens when the scratching is happening between the links? Are the, is that something that they're going to cover? Is that something that can be refinished? I don't think you can refinish the bracelet. You might end up having to buy a new bracelet. Bracelets are pretty expensive, and black steel right. bracelets are even more expensive. Well, 
for me, the bracelet issue wouldn't would be a non-issue because I don't really love the, wearing a bracelet. So, right. but even so. I would be concerned that the head of the watch being made in PVD versus DLC. Right. I, I would much, much, much rather own a watch, especially at the six thousand dollar price point in DLC, because I do know that it is much more scratch resistant than PVD. So that that's kind of a, a baffling. Yeah, thing I to mean, me. Tudor is known for value. I mean, you're getting an in-house movement under six thousand dollars. You get, you know, a, a top of the line materials. Perfect sapphire crystals, uh, anti-reflective coating, both the top and the bottom. To me, it's a bit of a miss. They really should have went DLC. It's not a huge deal, well, but and the other thing is, is that the Black Bay Dark Three Hander, mm -hmm. the dive watch, is DLC. No, I believe so. All right, and we may be wrong, but I believe it's I mm -hmm. believe it's DLC. Right. So anyway, so that's kind of a handful of the of the bad or the downsides to this watch. Of right. Bad points, in, in my opinion. Um, is there anything else that we missed? Uh, I don't believe so. I just think, I mean, we, we went on a bit more about the bed, but I do want to focus on why I think this watch really is so good. I mean, it's price point for what it is. If you can get your hands on one, I don't I don't think you'll ever really lose money on it. And it, it really is a fantastic looking watch. I mean, you, you see the photos we put up on the NATO mm -hmm. strap. I think it's an amazing watch. I think I, it's much better looking in the live photos than it is on there on, online and yeah. in, in the photo, in the artist renderings they distributed. Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, and I want to thank uh, Windsor Jewelers in North Carolina for supplying us with the photos. Thank you, Ben. And uh, we'll leave a link uh, down below to their website if you yeah. have any questions. So about all watches. in all, it's it's a winner. I think so. I for think sure. so too. I think they could have done a couple things better, but I think overall it's a winner. Yeah, I like the watch quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I, uh, let us know what you guys think down below. What do you? What's the good? What's the bad? Um, and. Actually, let us know. Did you even hear about this watch? I'm, I'm curious. I mean, it kind of went under the radar, I think. A little I didn't bit. know about it until you brought it up. Right. So you know? let us know down below if you even heard about this watch before yeah. this video. Maybe there wasn't a huge media press. Right. Cool. Well, as always, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, my name is John. I'm Anthony. And um, you can subscribe. Make sure you do that. We are, oh, by the way, before we leave, I, w I knew I was forgetting something. We're doing a giveaway. Yes, uh, we are. This Friday coming up, so you guys don't have a lot of time. Friday, September 20th at 12 o'clock noon, live on our YouTube channel. We are giving away two watches and a fountain pen. And the fountain pen is awesome. It's bananas. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the retail value, and I think is almost $1,900 yeah. for, the, for, the, for the pen. It may be more. Um, and then we're giving away a Hampton. Uh, mm -hmm. automatic watch and a Reverie uh, limited edition. So we're giving away two watches, giving away a pen. We will put in the description below the link to the video that announces the giveaway. Long story short, if you follow us on Instagram, if mm -hmm. you subscribe to our YouTube, or if you sign up for our newsletter on www.media.com, each one of those ways will get you an entry into the giveaway. We will be doing a random drawing on Friday the 20th mm -hmm. of September, which is just a few days away, live on our YouTube channel. So, uh, And this is the second time we're doing a giveaway. We're going to be doing this consistently throughout the year. Right. Um, so, you know what, if uh, you're watching this later on and you say, oh, it's after, after that Friday, don't worry, subscribe anyway. We're going to be announcing different giveaways. We're going to try to average a giveaway once every 60 days. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the plan. So even if you miss this giveaway coming up on the 20th, within two months we'll be doing another one. So For thanks sure. again. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube. Go to WWU Media and sign up for that newsletter and tell your friends about us. Yeah, um, share the video, guys. Yeah, rent the Skyplane and do writing <laughs> about Watch With Us. Exactly. Any, right. any, any, any little bit helps, and the more subscribers we get, we can keep uh, doing the giveaways for we can you actually, guys. We can actually step up the giveaways. Yeah. Because the more, the more subscribers, the more followers we have, the more brands want to donate to giveaways. So. Exactly. You know, it's a snowball type of effect. Help us help you. <laughs> help us help you. So thank you guys so much. Take it easy, A lot guys. of fun as always. We'll talk to you soon.